Chris K2CJB with you and uh, today I'm going to be doing some testing on the uh, link dipole. I've been having some high SWR on the 40 meter side of it. So today I thought I'd just set the antenna up in the yard, get the analyzer out and um, let's uh, see what's going on with the see which resonant see if we can adjust it if need be. So uh, let me show you what I've got out here to to do this with. I've got my uh, my rig expert analyzer. Get my length of coax usually use, and of course in this little bag is my dipole kits and, and uh, the stuff I use to hang the dipoles up with, and um, my uh, Shakespeare Wonder Pole. And to hold it up, huh, I got this idea from ham radio school. I saw the kids set up a vertical with a pole, and they lashed it up to a tamper. So I'm going to try that today. So we'll see how this goes. Yes, I am poolside. Okay, we've finally got everything all set up here. <laughs> Had a little, couple of misfires, getting the antenna to stand straight up. But uh, we've got it set up. So let me show you how I have it set up to test. This might be where some of the problem is. I've got the end of the antenna, what, maybe five inches off the ground. And I'm wondering if this little trick is really a, a problem or not, causing my SWR problems. But anyway, you can see, there's the antenna. There's the, uh, there's the, the pole. And you can see my little wooden uh, method of attaching the antenna to the pole. And there's the other end of the antenna. On the other side there you just about make it out over there so let's do some testing and uh, see what we get okay so i've set the center frequency to 7.200 and i want to set a wider range so i'm going to scan across um let's see let's do like 500 uh, kilohertz okay now let's see Oh, by the way, the, my battery light's flashing on this. I may have to stop and replace the batteries. Let's see how it goes. So now let's do an SWR scan. And let's see what we get. Hmm. That's not good at all. Um, let me just double check that the links are in. I accidentally deleted my last video clip, but here's what I'm scanning here is um, plus or minus 500 kilohertz centered on 7.200. And you can see that we're resonant, wow, way out of the band, uh, and not even really resonant. It's a two to one way out of the band, three to one in the middle of the band. So I'm gonna go back a little further and see what we get. Okay, this will be, this will be, um, 7.200 plus or minus 1 megahertz. So we're going down to 6.2 up to 8.2. Let's see what we get. Scanning. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> According to this, it's not resonant anywhere. Hmm. That's not good either. So given what I know so far, that... Um, it looks to me, looking at the analyzer, that it's resonant at about 6.7, 6.8 megahertz. And that's, when I say resonant, marginally, it's two to one there. So um, before I go changing the length of anything on the antenna, I think I'm going to try raising the ends somehow. Uh, I'm gonna see what I can do with that. So now using the, a little further out, the summations line, that's where I was. So now I'm probably about, I guess that's a good uh, 18 inches or so off the ground, right? So let's see if that makes a difference. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see what we get now. We're at 7.200 plus 1.5 megahertz. SWR scan. Here we go. Let's see what we get. No, same results. Same results. Pretty much, two to one. Uh, it's it's definitely th over 3.5 to one in the 40 meter band, and um, two to one outside of it, way outside of it. Now that's lower in frequency, so that means to make the antenna resonant, we want to make it shorter. Well, that's a good thing. I knocked about. I didn't cut anything. I just folded the wire back on itself and held it together with tie wraps. That was a zip tie on each end. Took about, um, I guess about four inches off each end. So let's see what we get now. Again, this is 7.2, plus or minus 1.5, actually minus one, 
plus or minus 750 kilohertz. And look, it did move closer, didn't it? It did move a little closer to resonance. So let's shorten it up a little more and see what we got. Okay, everything's the same. I took off another four inches or to each end. Again, I didn't cut anything. I just folded it back on itself. Uh, SWR. Let's see what we got. Here we go. All right, it is coming down. We're closer to resonance. We're about 2.75 to 1 just south of the band. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Well, sorry about that. The phone overheated. <laughs> I made some adjustments. Here's what I've done. I took, now I'm about, uh, probably about a foot off of each end of the antenna, each leg, and I changed the coax. And I'm at about two to one. I'm in the band now. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little more off and see what happens. Okay, hopefully the phone stays up. It doesn't uh, overheat on me. And here we go. I took some more off. Scan. Here it goes. And we're centered on 7.200. And it looks like that's where we're centered now. Okay, so we've made it resonant. In the band, it's still 2 to 1. Not great. But um, we're resonant in the band. Now, I'm going to try one more test. And that's to go broadband and see if, there's, if I'm in the wrong spot. For some oddball reason. Okay, I'm set to plus or minus 1.5 megahertz from 7.2 so I'm pretty far out of the band each side and I hope you can see it um, it's resonant I'm in the spot I'm in the band it's two to one that's the best we can get it um, which is interesting uh, now let me show you how I shortened it for now so here's the end as it comes from Tim and um, I just stuck a tie wrap here and you can see that's how much we shortened it so that's what you know about uh, it's about a foot and a half, I think, right? Maybe a little less. So we took about a total of three feet off the antenna, I think, maybe two and a half feet off the antenna. Um, and everything else still seems to be where it was. So uh, two things come out of shortening it, actually, is we've got the end of it way off the ground now, which is a good sign. That's a good thing. Uh, I was actually contemplating trying it low to the ground again and see what happens. In fact, I'd do that next. Interestingly, it's actually got a lower SWR with the antenna legs, the ends, about five or six inches off the ground where I originally had them. I'm standing here because the antenna started to tip over from uh, all this noodling around I've been doing. So there we go. So yeah, that's what the uh, antenna ends. Pretty uh, close to the ground. Well, hopefully the, uh, the phone doesn't shut down on me again. So there you go. That was an interesting test, right? So I took, uh, you saw what I took off. I'm not going to cut the antenna. I'm just going to leave a tie wrap like that and see how that goes the next time I take it out. Um, but the uh, putting the legs back down in the ground actually brought the SWR down. So it looks like the inverted V likes to have the legs close to the ground. I never, I mean, I kind of knew that, but didn't know that. So now I know that. <laughs> and also... Um, it looks like I just had to shorten the antenna up a little bit and make it work. So we'll uh, use it this way for a while and see what happens. And then, I mean, I'd hate to not use those ends that Tim put on this thing. I'd really like to use those. So maybe I'll contact them and see if I can replace them myself if I have to shorten the antenna. So there you go. A test of the link dipole. Playing with the rig analyzer and uh, the rig expert and just kind of looking at the antenna to make sure we get everything right for the radio. It's all about getting the, as much power as we can out to that antenna, making it as efficient and resonant as possible. So there you go. Listen, if this helped you in any way, give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Um, 73.